if you're learning Spark streaming or if you're trying to integrate Spark streaming with Kafka, then you should know that there are two ways to integrate Kafka with Spark streaming. It is called receiver based approach or direct Kafka approach. As part of this video, we are going to cover that what is receiver based approach and what is direct Kafka approach. We're also going to cover how you should choose between them and what are the benefits of each. So let us start with this. First, let us start with the receiver based approach. I want to make sure that you understand this approach with this simple diagram. We have a diagram, uh, we have a driver uh, which uh, is part of our uh, Spark application. It launches a job, launches a Spark streaming job. Now, on executor, a receiver will be started. A receiver is a separate thread which is going to connect with Kafka, then it is going to start receiving messages from Kafka. Whatever messages it receives, it is going to create a RDD out of it. And it is also, if you have enabled zero loss in Spark streaming, then it is going to create write ahead logs, and those write ahead logs will be stored on HDFS. So, if you want to increase the parallelism of uh, reading messages from Kafka, you can start multiple receivers in different executors. Basically, uh, if you want to process those all those messages received in a single batch interval, you have to do a union of all the messages, uh, all the streams which you are getting from uh, different different receivers. I hope this is simple and you, it is clear to you. Uh, what uh, let me summarize this thing. So we have created a receiver and receiver will receive messages from Kafka. Then, uh, you know, a receiver is going to store the received data on executor. If you have enabled zero loss, then it will also create write ahead logs. Those write ahead logs are replicated on a storage, something like HDFS. If you are using Amazon AWS, then it will be stored on S3. Now, this is the simple code if you are trying to create a uh, stream using uh, receiver based approach. Spark streaming comes with uh, implementation of that. You just need to call Kafka utils dot create stream and pass it the respective configuration or parameters. Uh, then you will get a stream and you can then process that stream as usually in a streaming job. Now let us understand direct Kafka. In direct Kafka approach, driver contacts Kafka and then it gets list of offsets, offsets of the messages which it needs to read. Then using those offsets, it will create respective jobs and will launch those jobs on executors. Now executors will read, every executor will have a range of uh, messages that it needs to process. The executor will take that range of messages and read those messages from Kafka and process those messages. And uh, it will also keep on checkpointing the messages that it has processed on uh, the local directory. Now this is this process is very simplified. Let us see the benefits of this process that Kafka. Okay. Our parallelism is simplified. Uh, essentially, uh, what happens in case of direct Kafka that uh, uh, we don't need to create multiple streams. In receiver approach, we had to create multiple receiver streams to increase our parallelism. And uh, uh, these streams, we have to then do a union and then we will go ahead with the processing. This is extra uh, overhead and work that we were doing. Uh, now in direct Kafka approach, Kaf, uh, Spark is handling this scenario for us. So, so number of partitions our RDD is going to have is equal to number of topics in Kafka. So this is simplified. So all uh, number of partitions creation and all those things are uh, abstracted from us. So basically, uh, our parallelism is simplified. Now, uh, in the receiver based approach, we were using right ahead logs uh, to avoid any loss of data. So 
Kafka was also repli- doing the replication of data. And uh, since we are storing write add logs on uh, HDFS, HDFS was also doing replication of data. So there was replication of data that was happening twice. So in direct Kafka approach, we don't use write ahead logs. So it is it has become more efficient uh, since there is no replication happening uh, two times. And uh, it is more faster also because uh, we don't need, uh, because we are getting uh, saving time on IO that was happening earlier. Okay, the third one is exactly one semantics. Uh, in the receiver based approach, uh, even though we were getting, uh, you know, uh, exactly one semantics in normal scenarios, whenever there is a failure, so basically we were storing processed messages offset in both Spark streaming and in both uh, in uh, Zookeeper also. So what was happening in case of failures, there was a probability that uh, uh, there can be incons- inconsistencies in Spark streaming data and Zookeeper information that uh, about the messages which are processed uh, since the information was being stored in two places. Now, in direct Kafka approach, we don't store any information in uh, in Spark streaming. It is offloaded to Zookeeper. If there is a failure, we just check on Zookeeper side that uh, uh, you know what were the messages processed and uh, uh, if uh, those messages were not processed, we'll start from the not processed messages. So this ca- takes care of exactly one's semantics. I hope it is clear to you guys. Uh, to create a direct Kafka stream, uh, Spark streaming APIs come with the you know implementation, and uh, you just need to call Kafka Utils dot create stream method and give it the respective uh, you know parameters. And you will get Kafka streams, and then you can start normally with doing all the processing. So basically, the creation of direct stream and handling of all those things is abstracted from the user. So this is a very good way of uh, uh, you know integrating Spark with Kafka. I hope you like this video. Uh, if you have any comments, please post it in the comment section. I'll be very happy to help you and answer your questions. Thank you.